It's the number one thing that I can give you and put in your kit bag to get you or your soldiers ready for the board. It's coming up. So let me give you a little bit of my experience and why I'm telling you what I'm gonna tell you. I am a first sergeant. I've, I've sat on more boards than I can shake a stick at. I've had at least, at least six best warriors, uh, both soldiers and NCOs, went all the way up to their MACOM. I myself won, uh, I, well, I, I lost at Forcecom, but, but I did make it to, to Forcecom. Uh, I'm also a member of the Sergeant Audie Murphy Club, so what I'm, and I've mentored uh, 12 people uh, to become members of the club as well. And it's something that I think that more often than not, we don't talk about enough. And it's the two minute drill, it's the two minute drill. And it's the most important two minutes of the board, hands down, bar none, it may not be two minutes. You know, may, maybe two, three minutes, maybe four minutes. Uh, it's something that's gonna be dictated based off of what the board is, is how it's proceeding and what it's going through and what you bring to the table. Because the more that you bring to the table and the more that you own it, the quicker it goes. The quicker it goes, the better it is for you unless it's going too fast and then you're out. <laughs> Hey, and as we get going, if you've been told like last minute notice or there's somebody that you know of who's in your charge or just somebody that, that, that you work with when you're battle buddies who's been told, hey, you got two weeks to get ready for the board or you got a week to get ready to go to the board, just leave a comment down below, get stoked. <laughs> Because, <laughs> man, that, that's about what you got to do uh, with this short notice. I, I, myself, I need to go. I'm going to leave a comment, get stoked, because that, that happened to me as well. And I've, I've done it to my soldiers. <laughs> All right, so let me break this down for you. And on the back, and I'm going to give you another uh, tidbit for success when it comes to answering questions. All right, so what is this two-minute drill? The two-minute drill is what I'm going to refer to as the moment from when you first knock on the door all the way up until that you get your very first question. All that space in between, that is the most important thing that you can be prepared for, and that's all in your charge. You may not know what questions are gonna be asked. You may not know whether it's gonna be shotgun style or, or more traditional style. You, you may not know anything that's gonna happen out over here, but all of this, this is 100% in your control, and so we need to break this down. So it starts with knocking on the door. So when you knock on the door, Pound, pound on it like you're a Viking, man. I mean, just beat the door down. When they tell you to report, you need to march in like you are a soldier, you know, and move with a sense of purpose and direction to the president of the board and report. When you report, make sure you're in a position of attention, right? We, we know all these things. Make sure you execute all your facing movements. Don't just cupcake and lollipop from position to position. Make sure that when somebody looks at you, they are instantly brought back to and reminded of what their drill sergeant looked like. That's what you want to do. You want to reincarnate that for them. You are the epitome of professionals. They can trust you uh, in the profession of arms to carry on our customs and our courtesy and to have discipline, not only for yourself, but those who will be in your charge. That's what we're looking for as board members. And shortly after, the president of the board is gonna ask you to tell the board a little bit about yourself. This is the first time, other than reporting, that you have the opportunity to speak, so you need to make it count. Now, when you say your bio, you need to do so with conviction. You need to have your biography memorized word for word, just like you do the creed of the non-commissioned officer, just like you do the soldier's creed. You know, you need to have this, it needs to be coming from you, and when you say it, you need to feel it, and you need to believe it so that the board members will believe it as well. So, for example, Good morning. I'm First Sergeant Harold William Stoker. I was born April 3rd, 1976 in Roswell, New Mexico. In April 24th, 1994, I enlisted in the United States Marine Corps and earned the MOS 8554 Close Quarters Battle Team Leader. And then you just keep going on and cover how and where you entered, why you entered, and make sure you cover your short-term and your long-term goals. You also need to be able to ensure that you know a few basic things in this two-minute drill uh, that, you're, that you could possibly be asked. Uh, make sure that you know your, the seven army values, right? Make sure you know your general orders. Make sure you know the soldier's creed, especially this is a big one for NCOs who think that now that I'm an NCO, I don't have to worry about memorizing the soldier's creed, man. That is absolutely the wrong answer because I will spit you up and chew you out and kick you out if you don't know the soldier's creed, right? So make sure that you know the soldier's 
creed. Make sure that you have memorized and know the creed of the non-commissioned officer. Now, when it comes to saying these creeds, it should go just like your bio. You need to have it more than memorized that you can just regurgitate words. I don't care if you can regurgitate words. I mean, I do care, but I want more than that. I need to know that it means something to you. It needs to be a creed by which we live by. So for example, no one is more professional than I. I am a non-commissioned officer, a leader of soldiers. As a non-commissioned officer, I realize that I'm a member of a time-honored corps, which is known as the backbone of the army. You see what I'm saying? Because I could have said it like this, no one is more professional than I. I am a non-commissioned officer, a leader of soldiers. As a non-commissioned officer, I realize I'm a member of a time-honored corps, which is known as the backbone of the army. I said the same thing, but obviously in one rendition, I really was saying the creed. In the other one, I was just spitting out words. So work on that, and that's going to be huge for you. Because once you do that, once you can, you can win the board, whether it's a promotion board and you're just competing against yourself, or whether it's a competition board and you're competing against your peers, that first two minutes is what will win or lose the board for you. I promise you. I promise you, if you can own it with conviction, if you don't lose any confidence, because if you don't say things with confidence, then you start to lose confidence, and the board members, they're sharks, and they see it, and they're going to start attacking you, and then you're going to start losing more confidence, and it's just all going to go downhill from there. It doesn't matter how much, how much well-prepared you are. It doesn't matter how much deserving that you are. It all comes down to, are you prepared? Are you confident to handle the waters? That's what it really, truthfully comes down to. Now shortly after, man, you know, the board members are going to start to go and they're going to start asking you questions. So at this point in time, you know, board members are either convicted and they they like, mm, you know, this, this soldier got it. This soldier got it. Or they're thinking, eh, is it going to be right for me to say no? We'll, we'll see. So you don't want to be, you want to control the narrative. So what, so what I'm telling you is to control the narrative of the board and put everything that is in your control, own it and operate with it so that they can see it and believe it. And so the other biggest thing I can give to you and putting your kit back from this point, moving all the way forward. And it's the, the, the other biggest thing that will help set yourself apart from your peers. And it's how you answer questions. You can answer a question in a simple black and white. Yes, this, no, that, you know, short sentence. And, and that, those are fine. There's nothing inherently wrong with these, but there's another thing that you can do. And it's going to add a little bit of clarity, a little bit of content, a little bit of texture, if you will, to your answers, and it will truly set yourself apart from your peers. Now, for example, let's say a board member says, specialist, what are the types of north that you can find on a military map? You could, in response, say, first sergeant, there are three types of north on a military map, grid north, true north and magnetic north. Right, and that would not be the wrong answer. It's the right answer, uh, but, but it, it's, it's just dull, right? It's, it's not very sharp. It doesn't pierce that you know what the hell you're talking about. So what if we reframed our answer and it sounded something a little bit more like this? First Sergeant, there are three types of north on a military map, true, grid, and magnetic, all of which can be found in the legend on a map. The difference between magnetic north and grid north is called declination. Just a couple extra words and it adds a little bit of panache, right? A little, bit of, a little bit of substance. I start to get the feeling that you did more than just study the cliff notes. You're, you're ready for more responsibility by just demonstrating that you know a little bit more than what I was asking you for. And based off of that, then maybe I can, I start to feel good about saying yes. And maybe I start to feel good about, mm, you know, this soldier has got it going on. We need to move the soldier to the next level. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the content of the video. If you did, make sure you like it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and click the notification bell so you can stay up to date on some future content. And as always, until then, man, we'll see you. I'm Sergeant Xiomara Mascorro. I was born and raised in San Diego, California. From my earliest memories, my family instilled values in me that I live to this day. Values like loyalty developed a sense of pride in myself and Army family as I work to ensure that no one is more professional than I. 
As a non-commissioned officer, I realize that my life and work is not about myself. It's about team and family. Competence has always been my watchword. As a signal leader, I have had the privilege to work at a SACCOM facility in Korea, and I'm currently assigned to the Army's oldest and finest signal battalion in the United States Army, the 51st Expeditionary Signal Battalion. It's my honor to lead soldiers in Spartan Company. As passionate as I am about accomplishing the mission, I'm equally as excited about taking care of those soldiers in my charge and improving the organization. That is why I have enabled dozens of soldiers to re-enlist, continuing their service, and develop programs to return injured soldiers to the fight. I believe that great organizations do routine actions with excellence. And as a non-commissioned officer, I have responsibilities inherent in that role. As a result of training to standard in areas such as physical fitness, wield and weapons maintenance, as well as mastering our technical and tactical craft, I'm proud to say that my soldiers within my squad have won multiple Soldiers of the Quarter and Year competitions, as well as graduating from BLC with honors and three earning their promotable status. Through all of this organizational success, in so many ways, it all comes back to my roots. You see, my family also instilled in me the values of respect and integrity, which led to my attending the University of California and earning my bachelor's degree in biochemistry. So when the officers in my unit need maximum time to accomplish the mission, they know that there is a strong and capable NCO who is able to accomplish hers. As a result, we successfully deployed team of signaliers to UCOM as well as CPN team to Seattle in direct response to COVID-19, supporting our Northwest, and are currently preparing for a deployment to Africa in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. My short-term goals include being selected as the Army NCO of the Year while serving to not allow my comrades to forget that they are professionals and leaders within the finest profession of arms in the history of the world. My long-term goals include purchasing a home, completing my master's degree in chemistry, as well as serving as a first sergeant. Sergeant Mascoro, reporting to the President of the Board.